Hey, today I'm going to run through an example analyzing a property. Uh, this is a property I've never analyzed before. I just randomly pulled it up off of uh, off of the internet, and we're going to run through it real quick. Uh, just for some reference, this particular one's in Providence, Rhode Island, that I found. It's a three-family listed for 289, and uh, it's a little bit older, but that's normal in that side of in that part of the country. It was built around uh, 1900. And let's take a look at it. So this is a normal looking house in this area. Take a look at some of these pictures. Okay, it could use some updating, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's got hardwood floors. And that's about it. So it's got old cabinets, but the, everything looks like they're in good condition at least. It's two to four units, it's a three family. Okay, scrolling down, taking a look at this a little bit more detail. All right, it's got a full basement, which that's normal. Um, parking spaces, which is great. So it's got seven parking spots. That's ample. Vinyl siding, it's great. Um, it's got heating, is is gas, which is important, versus electric, which is really expensive in that part of the country. All right, so here's the information on the rents. Unit one and two, both are three bed, one bath. And unit three is two bed, one bath. And that makes sense because you saw the attic. It's obviously a finished attic space. Um, and it looks like that's getting $800 for the two bedroom, 1000 for the three bedroom, and 1200 for the other three bedroom uh, for a total of $3,000. All right. Now let's go ahead and stick this in the calculator. I'm going to move that aside. I have it on my other monitor for reference. You, I can't record both. So let's go ahead and start plugging this information in. Three units. Uh, what did it say? It was uh, how many square feet? I think it was around 4,000, uh, 3,000. Uh, yeah, 12, 28, 12, 28, and 7. So let's just say that's 3,000. Okay. They're asking 289. Let's just leave it just to start. I like to put in the same price uh, for the offer price because we can come back and put it that later. Rehab budget need definitely needs needs a little bit of work, but it's in okay condition. So there's a couple different ways you could run it. You could go full renovations, top to bottom, which is going to be really expensive. You're probably talking a hundred thousand uh, dollars. You could do light renovations, you know, maybe some uh, floors, paint, and such. And, uh, and get those rents up to the top dollar. So let's uh, let's go with the lighter option. So you're probably talking under fifteen thousand for renovations if you go with the light the the lighter option. And uh, let's just say it's worth three hundred thousand after repairs. I don't really know. So you'd have to do a comparative market analysis. I'm just punching some information in here to see you know how close if this is worth looking at so let's say first year we're gonna kick the kick the tenants out and uh, and renovate the units one at a time so we're gonna end up with a high vacancy the first year and then year two that's gonna that's gonna come down to like here and then maybe we'll stabilize out at eight percent um, rent growth let's just assume a one percent Increase across the board and in expenses for inflation. Let's assume it's one percent. All right, now there's two different types of units. There's the three bedrooms and the and the uh, and the two bedroom units. So this is 1228, and this is 713. I'm just inputting the information I get off of it. There's two total units of the three bedrooms, and there's one of the two bedrooms. Now normally. Three bedrooms would be considered C, unit C. So just to keep things consistent. Uh, number not upgraded. Okay, because none of them are upgraded. So two of them are not upgraded and one of the two bedrooms is not upgraded. Current rent per month. Do you know what we're going to do? Because they're at, um, we'll just do this. The average, one's at 1,200, one's at 1,000. So the average between the two is 1,100. 
And let's say that after repairs, you're at $1,300. Now, what we could do real quick, just for fun, hold on one second while I do this. We're going to go ahead and just do a quick analysis on rental meter, which is a cool little tool. And here you can see when I punch the address in, it's saying the average rent's around 1500 actually, and that this rent of 1200 is on the really low side. So I'd feel comfortable, and you can also go here and kind of get an idea what's going on. Like that one's 950, but that one's 1100. So they vary. And there's none really close by to this one, which is right here. But these ones, pretty much everybody's higher. So 1300 is definitely very reasonable. Definitely very reasonable. You could honestly bump that up to 1400 if you wanted to, uh, or even higher. So maybe let's just do 1350. I still want to be conservative. Now over here on the B1, this is renting for, I think it was 800. Just let me double check that real quick. Let's see. Yep, that's renting for 800. So we'll go ahead and pop in 800, and then running on the rental meter again on a two bed. Analyze that real quick, and that's popping up with a median of 1280. So this is way, way under. So let's just go high now. And I'm I'm going a little low on each of these because I'm not going into a really deep rent analysis to really see what it's worth. So if it says the median's 1200 and I'm putting in a thousand, the other one says the median's 1500 and we got 1350. We're way under the the rents in the area. And this is just for quick numbers here. You would need to refine these numbers as you get through the process of doing an offer. So right here, this is what you're receiving right now. Uh, you're receiving zero off of the upgraded units. And let's see. So Lending information, let's just say none of that. You can get 75% at 5% interest rate. Uh, you know, you put the amortization in here. I know a lot of, uh, you know, you can sometimes you do 30 year amort, sometimes 20 year. Let's just leave it at 30 with uh, no interest only. Uh, closing costs. Now acquisition fee and stuff like that is if you're if you've got partners, so let's just keep that at zero. Working capital, you're gonna want some money set aside for for unknown miscellaneous stuff. So let's just put aside 7,500 bucks. You don't have to pay a buyer broker on this deal. Um, so again, this is if you have partners. So we're not gonna put anything, but you are gonna sell it on the back end. So let's put six percent there. Um, we'll leave this at zero, so to use the after repair value. Um, and let's just say it's going to take you 12 months to do all the renovations. Now here, depending on, on what you want to do, you can break these down any way that you want. Uh, I'm going to just really quickly use, uh, I'm going to use the 50% rule just to keep it simple. So if it's making $3,000 a year, a uh, month, that's 36. So that's going to be 18,000. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to randomly pick one of these and just bump it and bump this up until it gets to about 18,000. Yeah. So we'll leave that there. So that's about $18,000 a year. And that, that should cover. And again, that, I'm not saying I'm spending that all on advertising. I'm just putting a number in there just to get my final number. Cause I'm just trying to run quick numbers and there we go. And so that I've pretty much filled out all the, the information, at least to start. Let's go ahead and take a look at the output and see what we come up with. All right. So we're looking at obviously year one, we're not going to really be earning very much, but it's going to stabilize out by year three at about 9% cash on cash. And you're talking uh, over five years, you're going to be making about total return of 50%, which is about 10% a year. So it's really not that good of a deal as it stands. So let's go ahead and dive in a little deeper and, and you can, 
see all you know all the different information and projections and stuff let's go let's go play around with the numbers let's, what kind of offer so maybe the ARV is off let's let's see what um, you know maybe that might be worth more you got to dive in and do the comps or you could offer a little bit less maybe we maybe we do a little bit below asking maybe we offer uh, 280 and maybe we refine these numbers so you would go in and you'd look at the closer comps and maybe you find out that 1400 is actually a better number um, again I'm just kind of making this up because I want to see what happens to my return so here we would stabilize out about 11 percent which is a little bit better number especially in Providence market you know low returns generally there so you need to go ahead I've made a bunch of assumptions here if I was spending an extra 30 minutes, I would go ahead and I would verify these assumptions. Like, what is truly the upgraded rent? How much you got to tour the property, right? We only made an assumption what the rehab budget is. This is with no tour. You would have to go on a tour and you would decide is 15,000 reasonable? Is it more or less, right? And then you come back to the calculator and refine this number a little bit. So I would say if this was me. And I was looking at these numbers, I'd probably go tour this property. You know, I only spent five or ten minutes random numbers. And I think that if I was buying in a Providence market with 11% cash on cash return, I would say I would at least go look at it. You know, the overall return, 61% in, two, in five years, isn't that high. So it's not a lot of value add. But I just guessed on the after repair value. I might find that that was actually, I'm off by whatever that could be it could start off at 325 and then and then go up every year from there so th there's a number of variables that you got to go into but I would say I would be interested in at least taking a little bit deeper look at this one and then uh, deciding if I should make an offer